what? I'm a geek. Give me enough time and pretty much any movie, I can read whatever themes into it I want. So, this is something that's a little bit of an experiment for me and a little bit of an exercise as well. I'm going to offer transgender themed readings of five films, well-known films. Now, before I get into this, despite a little bit clickbaity nature of the title, um, I am not going to be saying that these films are designed with transgender themes in mind. What the point of this is, is to give you an idea of how the themes and the features of various films and stories can have appeal to somebody who is looking for transgender themes to be able to relate to. So usually um, some sort of transgender audience. Now, again, this doesn't mean that the filmmakers necessarily had it in mind. It doesn't mean that it was intentional. But that is the nature of giving something a reading. That's the nature of a feminist reading, a Marxist reading, a capitalist reading. Whatever lens you want to view a film through, you can find themes that will in some way factor into the lens that you're going through. And I'm going to put a trans lens on these five films. And to sort of make it go as cleanly as possible, I'm going to talk about initially some of the common threads you're going to see recurring, and then we'll start to put it into practice. Now, sort of the main thing you're going to be coming across whenever you, um, or whenever I am going to be talking about having spotted transgender or transgender applicable themes in these films, is that there's going to be a lot of sense of dissatisfaction from the characters in question that we're talking about. Now, dissatisfied characters are actually incredibly common in not just film, but basically any story, because if your lead character wasn't in some way dissatisfied, then they don't have as much reason to go on an adventure, to change, to, you know, to have an arc as a character. So, dissatisfaction with life, circumstances, things like that, incredibly common. What is a little bit less common, and what's going to come up in most of these examples, is a dissatisfaction with self. So it's not just, say, Luke Skywalker bemoaning the fact that he's stuck on a moisture farm and he'd rather be off doing something else. That's a dissatisfaction with circumstance, with location, with life in general, but not with himself. He doesn't think there's something wrong with him. There's just something wrong with his life and where he's stuck. So with that in mind, we're actually going to start with a film that, while the filmmakers I don't think have ever gone on record as these being transgender themes, it's pretty well agreed at this point that they are actually intended in the film. So let's start with The Matrix. As I would hope folks would know at this point, but you know what? Best to not presume. The Wachowskis were, at the time the film was originally released, credited as the Wachowski brothers. They're not called that anymore because both Lily and Lana Wachowski are transgender women. The more that we have found out about the Wachowskis, and we honestly don't know a ton about them, they're both very private. However, Knowing now that both of these individuals are trans women and were at the very least questioning if we're not already aware of this fact at the time that they made The Matrix, you can see where what I'm about to talk about definitely applies. So let's talk about Neo. Neo, at a fundamental level, feels that the world is wrong and his place in it doesn't seem to exist. So this is a combination of something's wrong with the world, but also something's wrong with me. I don't fit here. I don't belong here. And yet at the same time, he cannot pinpoint why. He knows something's wrong, but he doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know why it's wrong. And that's actually pretty 
common uh, as a transgender experience. And then he starts to find people of a similar mindset through the internet, which it's true now, but honestly, the internet did a lot to open up and enable people like trans people or LGBTQ plus people in general, or all kinds of people who fit into relatively small niches to find each other because you couldn't count on there being someone else like you in the town you lived in, but you could find them online, which Neo does. And lest we forget, one of the main things that the villain, Agent Smith, does to mock, taunt, and torment Neo is to dead name him. Mr. Anderson. Repeatedly across the whole thing. And what is Neo's biggest moment of triumph? My name is Neo. He affirms his identity. He smashes him into the freaking ceiling. And again, the more we've learned about um, Lillian Lana Wachowski, the more it is very clear how strong these themes are in The Matrix. So let's move on to a couple of films where it's less likely that the themes were there intentionally from the start, but they still can be seen there. I want to talk about Disney's The Little Mermaid, which, <laughs> again, I have no doubt was not intended to have a transgender reading, but it absolutely works as one. It's not just that Ariel goes through a transformation from a mermaid to a human. That in and of itself doesn't make it function as a trans narrative. What makes it function as a trans narrative is her dissatisfaction with the life she has, her wishing and feeling more connection to this other world that everything about her life and what she was born into says, you can't have that. You can't be that. Feeling that connection so strongly and the level of sacrifice she's willing to do in order to experience being in that world. Right down to smaller details like the awkwardness of bodily changes from her transition from mermaid into human. And I know some people will say, well, she did it for a guy and Eric was the catalyst, but go back and watch that movie again. Her song, Part of Your World, is about wanting to be there. It's not about Eric. Before she meets him, she wants to be there. She wants to be among them. She feels a kinship to them. Eric's the catalyst that he's basically the straw that broke the camel's back. He's not the reason she does it. She already wanted that. Little Mermaid brings in which is a very common experience for trans people, a familial rejection. Her father rejects her for identifying as something other than what he knows her as, and what she was born as, and eventually comes around to that, which gives it another layer of beauty right there. So I'm going <laughs> to... These next few are, are going to get uh, a little bit stretchier, but I had fun thinking about these. Uh, how about Avatar? It's getting sequels. People remember that? Mm -hmm. So somewhat similarly to The Matrix, you have the main character in Avatar finding a place where he has, he has somewhere to be. He has a place in this other world where he fits. When he gets into his Avatar and he starts to be with the Navi, he feels much more accepted. He feels much more like this fits than he did before. Now, a little bit unlike Neo, he wasn't necessarily looking for a meaning or something else because the world must be wrong. He had just kind of given up and he didn't assume that there was anything else out there for him. Neo was looking for meaning. He isn't looking, but he finds it anyway. And this can happen for trans people because some of us don't always know that identifying differently 
will help. It doesn't occur to us either because we just have no reason to think that it would help. We have no reason to try that. And he doesn't seek this out. He's recruited because he happens to fit the template that they already had because he had a twin brother who was involved in this project. It's sheer coincidence. But then, when he's there, when he's in a new body, when he's in this setting, when he's having this experience, every day that he's there, every day he is living this new existence, it feels more real and it feels truer to who he is than every time he has to go back. To the point that he eventually fully sheds his old life and his old body and embraces a new one. And if you're going to do a transgender reading, it is actually worth noting in Avatar that the shift between these two modes of life, when he is still trying to be both, those shifts are awkward for him. And you can tell they're a little bit uncomfortable. And eventually it just it becomes a chore to go back. Also not uncommon among trans people, especially those who take longer to find that identity and actually attempt to live it. Because another thing that can happen is a lot of trans people will fight that desire even after they've identified it. But then once they try it, they go back and they go back and they go back until that's where they decide to stay, much like the main character in Avatar does. This one, <laughs> I came up with this one on a whim but I'm gonna have fun with it. So let's talk about Batman. Oh yeah, sure, this is gonna piss off anyone that I'm gonna make the claim that Batman functions as a transgender narrative. <clears throat> uh, I am, however, gonna be very specific. I wanna talk about Batman Begins. Because in that film, the way in which we see the journey from Bruce Wayne to Batman has some parallels and some function and some utility as a allegorically trans story. I mean, first of all, at its core, it's a journey of self-discovery and it, it's one that takes him some time, as it does many of us. But that's just a starting point. That's pretty basic. And you could apply that to a lot of things. So what else have I got to go with this particular film? What I find interesting is that Bruce Wayne's lowest point, he hits bottom at the point at which he is clinging desperately to a life that doesn't work for him anymore and hasn't for a while. His lowest point is when he is prepared and goes with the intent of shooting Joe Chill. That's how low he has become. That is how much the life he was born into isn't working for him. He has tried to live it. He has gone to the schools he's supposed to go to. He has come back to try and honor his parents. But it's not working. He keeps trying to make this fit. He keeps trying to live the life he's supposed to lead and it doesn't work. He bottoms out so hard that he almost takes another human being's life. And it's only when he walks away from that that he starts to find out who he really is. And this could even work specifically as a closeted trans narrative. Someone who isn't out yet. Because there's the whole notion of What's the mask? What's the face I have to present? And who am I really? And for many trans people, be it early in transition or even late into it, depending on life circumstances or things of that nature, a lot of us have to present the face that is expected, even though it's not at all accurate and it's not the face that we are feeling more at home with and that we have been discovering and developing, like how Bruce Wayne has to present as the playboy, even though he is feeling more akin to Batman the more time he spends in that. And that is the side of his life he's been developing. But that's not what he can present to the world. So we're going to wrap up because lest you think that only 
positive stories can be read with a transgender lens. No, let's, uh, let's end on a horror movie. How about The Fly? Now, this one, if you're going to look at it through a trans lens, it functions a little bit differently because unlike pretty much every other one that we've dealt with, this is initially an involuntary change. So that does put it in a bit of a unique sphere to look at it through this lens and with this perspective because it is actually kind of important that all the other characters I've talked about chose to explore this other life, chose to change themselves, chose to inhabit different bodies or to alter their own or to embrace a whole new life or a whole new identity. Becoming Brundlefly, he didn't choose to do that. But once he identified that that was what was happening, he embraces it. And while in the context of the film it is completely a, a horrible accident by circumstance, one could argue that trans people also don't choose. They don't choose their identity at the very least. Now, if they're going to undergo severe personal physical alterations, that's usually a choice. But that fact that they have that identity, that they are trans. Because what you're trans whether you have surgery or not. You're trans whether you're on hormones or not. So the idea that Brundlefly is created by something that is involuntary actually doesn't completely derail it as a trans story. And what's interesting about this one is as he becomes to the eyes of the world and to the eyes of the audience, more and more monstrous, less and less human, he is largely embracing this. He is, he is documenting it. He is keeping track of it. He doesn't seem to be horrified by it, or at least not nearly as much as one would think he should be. And this entire shifting sense of self is at first confusing, but he does for the most part, seem to come to a certain amount of peace with it. And I also like that the change is gradual. Most of the other ones we've talked about have had pretty clear divergent points where the change happened here. The initial point is pretty quick, but the actual change is gradual over time, which is also going to be true of most trans people. We don't just go away and suddenly show up again having had a ton of surgery and all this stuff. No, it's a very gradual thing. You can go back and look at my videos from a couple years ago. Or, you know, go back one year, then go back two. You know, it happens over time. Now, I'm sure someone will bring up the fact that at the very end, he puts his head in front of a shotgun and seems to want to end his life. Doesn't that go against my saying that he had seemed to come to some kind of acceptance of himself? I'm not sure it does because he is conflicted. And so are many trans people. And especially in situations where it gets hammered home that the rest of the world is not going to accept us, it can put us in very low places. And for some that can lead to the thought that I want to die. Hate to end on a sadder or dour note, but this life trans, gender fluid, non-binary, the whole spectrum, it can be tough. And it's not always sunshine and roses. And sometimes the reading that you can place a film that and have it function as a trans narrative isn't going to be a fun one. But I still had fun doing this as a bit of, a, of an exercise for myself in sort of, and to a certain degree, projecting a trans lens onto some films. Did people enjoy this at all? Or were you confused as to what the hell I was even doing? <laughs>
I don't know. This, this is a little bit of a weird one for me, but I hope you liked it. Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Whole bunch of stuff to do. Like, subscribe. I have a Patreon. Share this around. All that stuff. But also, you don't have to because end of the day, you are the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. <laughs>